David House is a computer researcher at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He first met Bradley Manning last May at a hackerspace he'd founded in Boston. He's now the only friend allowed to visit Bradley Manning regularly and travels to see him at Quantico twice a month. Bradley Manning, uh, you hear him coming from a long way away. He's come from the other side of the brig and you hear the chains. He's unable to exercise. He's kept in his cell for 23 hours a day. And the only exercise he gets is walking around in the room in chains. I went and saw him again in December, this last December, and it was completely alarming. This transition had happened to him. He was ashen-faced, had huge bags under his eyes, and he had trouble keeping up with topics of conversation, something that had never been a problem for him. So it's this confinement, this solitary confinement, has really taken a huge toll on him, definitely. Since his arrest, Bradley Manning has been held in conditions which his supporters argue were designed to break him and lead him to cooperate with the agencies who were investigating Julian Assange and his part in the leaks. If the allegations against Bradley Manning are true, uh, he is uh, the United States' foremost political prisoner. The increase in the severity of his treatment according to my legal advice, is an attempt to pressure him uh, into trying to embroil us uh, in some sort of espionage-related charge. I was held in solitary confinement back in 1988-1989 uh, by the federal government as a national security threat because a federal prosecutor had told a judge that I could whistle into a telephone and launch a nuclear weapon. Kevin Mitnick is another former hacker who fell foul of the law. He is under no illusions as to why he was held in solitary confinement and what effect it had on his case. What the government did is they stuck me in solitary confinement to one, punish me, and two, get, get me to cooperate so they wouldn't have to really try the case. And it was extremely effective and after eight and a half months of sitting in a room for 23 out of 24 hours a day, I just signed the deal. So they want him to do a deal. They want him to turn the tables on Julian Assange. I think that's completely correct. Uh, it's like uh, a sledgehammer trying to crack a, a very small nut. The US government is just trying to put immense pressure on him in order to get him to crack open. The pressure now being applied by US intelligence agencies, not just to Bradley Manning, but to supporters like David House, is intense. I think the US government is trying to take down the WikiLeaks organization at all costs, and they are willing to embroil any individuals who get in their way, legitimate legal advocates or not, in order to do so. Last June, federal agents came knocking on David House's front door. At one point in this conversation, uh, one of the gentlemen said flatly, while staring me directly in the eyes, uh, if you can keep your ear to the ground on this thing, there might be a very large cash award in it for you. It was very alarming to me. I mean, I didn't think the U.S. government offered bribes to people. Hi, you've reached Brad Manning at my deployment phone number. This is the only known recording of Bradley Manning's voice taped when on deployment to Baghdad. Please leave a message or call me back later. Thank you. It's the voice of a man who, following his arrest, has now been silenced by the American military. Bradley Manning's fate is now extremely uncertain. If the charges against him are upheld in a court-martial, he could face up to 52 years in prison. <laughs>